So in this episode, I'm going to teach you about something called iteration statements inside C sharp. And you may know iteration statements as something else, which is something called loops. And loops is something that we use quite often in many different programming languages. I would actually say in any programming language that has any kind of logic to it, we use loops for different various things. Now, just to sort of explain what exactly a loop does inside a programming language like C sharp here, because I know some people, they may not have heard about loops before. Essentially, we want to spit out some kind of data. Then we can use loops in order to spit out that piece of data many times in a row if a certain condition is true. So if I want to spit something out 10 times, which is going to be the same data 10 times, then I can do that using a loop. And there's many different reasons why we might want to use a loop in order to spit out data multiple times. I think as we go on and keep talking about these different loops, you may start to see, you know, when exactly we need to use these loops inside many different types of applications. So we're just going to go ahead and go through the loops. And then at some point in the future, we will have projects where we need to use loops and then we'll go like, Oh, okay. So that's what you, you know, loops are kind of used for. I do also think some people use loops in, the previous project we did on this channel here, or at least in this course here. So go back and watch that if you want to see an example of when exactly we use loops inside uh, C sharp here. Now, the first loop we're going to talk about is something called a for loop. And as you can see, I do actually have the, you know, various different loops underneath each other here. Uh, you can't quite see the last one down there, but we will get to that one at some point. So the idea behind a for loop is that if you want to spit out some data, a certain number of times, and we already know how many times we want to spit it out, then we want to do that using a for loop. So in the top loop here, you can actually see that I defined the for loop using for as a keyword, followed by a pair of parentheses, where we then have three different parameters inside of it. Now the three parameters is going to be what determines how many times we want to loop something using the for loop. So in this case here, you can see that I created a integer or a variable we might want to call it called I and I set it equal to zero. So now I have a starting point for this loop here. The next number I defined inside of here, separated by a semicolon, by the way, not a comma, because usually it's commas we use inside uh, parameters inside parentheses. In this case here, it is followed by a semicolon. In the next part here, I defined when exactly does the loop need to stop? Because we don't want to create something called an infinite loop inside any sort of programmer language. Because if you create a loop that doesn't have a stopping point, it's just going to keep spitting out data. And in the end, it's going to crash whatever application or whatever website that you're trying to view inside the browser, because it just keeps loading and loading and loading data into the website or the application. So it will crash the software or the program at some point. So make sure you always have a stopping point when it comes to loops inside your application. Now we do also need to indicate one more thing, which is how much do I want I to increase after each loop? Because if we don't do that, we're going to create that infinite loop that I was talking about. In this example here, I just decided that, okay, I is just going to increment by one each time we loop one time. So as you can see, I just created a incrementer. So I is just going to incre increase by one after each loop there. If I were to actually play this inside the console, it is just going to write something out called loop number, and then it's going to say number zero to start with. And then it's going to be one the next time, and then two, and then three, and then four. And until we reach nine, it is going to just stop looping. And then it's just going to continue running whatever comes after inside our code here. Now, the next loop we're going to talk about is something that we use in combination with arrays inside our code. Just for the sake of this little exercise here, I went ahead and created an array that I just had uh, with a bunch of names inside of it. And what the purpose is of a for each loop is to spit out array data one by one until you reach the last piece of data. And then it's just going to stop automatically. So don't need to worry about creating a infinite loop here. It will just stop once the data or once the array doesn't have more data inside of it. As you can see, I defined the loop by creating a for each keyword followed by parentheses. So you're kind of seeing that we're getting a pattern here. It's a keyword parentheses and curly brackets. That's essentially how loops look like inside uh, program languages. Uh, inside the for each uh, parentheses, I need to define first of all a new variable, which we haven't created yet, but I will inside the parentheses here, just like we did with I up here, we just create a new variable in there. And this one is going to be a placeholder, which means that inside the curly brackets, whenever I refer to this variable here, I refer to the data inside the array. Okay, 
So what I do then is to say, well, for each string name inside names, which is the name of the array we have up here. So we say, okay, this is the keyword that I want to reference to. And this is the array that I am trying to get data from inside my short example here. So what I did is inside my actual curly brackets, I just simply console.writeLined name inside the console. So what I'm doing here is I'm spitting out Daniel, John, Jane, and Lisa, just one by one. And then it's going to stop at the end there. The next loop we're going to talk about is actually one that, uh, that I personally use the most inside any sort of programmer language, which is the while loop. And the while loop is one that you will get very happy about using because it does have a lot of great purposes. Essentially, it works very similar to an if statement. We talked about if statements before, conditional statements, where we have the if keyword, parentheses, and then as long as whatever's inside the parentheses is true, then it's just going to, you know, run the block of code inside the curly brackets. The while loop functions in a very similar way. The difference is, is that as long as the condition is true, it is just going to keep running the block of code. So in this case here, I, before creating the loop, created a uh, integer called num1, and I set it equal to zero. And then I went ahead and created the loop with the keyword, followed by parentheses, just like tradition would have it. Inside the parentheses, I said, okay, well, as long as num1 is lesser than 10, I want to keep looping. So again, we have to be careful here. We don't create this infinite loop that we may have created inside the for example, the for loop that we talked about first. So inside the while loop here, you can actually see I went ahead and ran the code that I wanted to run inside the block. And then inside the curly brackets as well, I increased num1 by one. So at the end here, it is going to increase by one. Then the next time num uh, one is going to be one and two and three and so on until the while loop is not going to be true anymore. So it's very important that we define inside the loop some sort of incrementer or decrementer that allow for the condition that is in here to become false. And we don't have to use numbers all the time. So this could be uh, if num one is not equal to Daniel, for example, and then at some point inside the while loop, we may change Daniel into something else if that was actually, you know, the value of num1. So it doesn't have to be number specifically. That's very important to point out because there are examples where we, um, <laughs> you know, just stop a loop inside a while loop because it's not a number. Now, the last one down here is actually very similar to the, the while loop that we just talked about. It's called a do while loop. Now, the only difference here is that the loop is always going to run at least one time. And then afterwards, it's going to check, okay, is the condition true? If it is so, then we're going to keep looping. So in this case up here, where we just talked about the while loop, we may never actually run the code inside the curly brackets, because if I were to go up to num uh, one up here and set it to 20, this one is never going to run because you know it's never true. Whereas this one down here will at least do this block of code, which I defined by the do keyword. And then afterwards, we're going to tell it what is going to be the condition to keep looping this block of code that is inside the do statement up here. And again, we need to be careful here that we don't create an infinite loop, just like with other examples, because if I were to not go ahead and increase the number inside the do block here, then the while statement that we have down here, the condition, might be true constantly. It's going to be true all the time. So we want to make sure we stop this at some point by actually changing whatever we're checking for inside the do block of code that is in here. So that was essentially what I want to talk about when it comes to loops inside C sharp. Sorry about the whatever <laughs> I have going on here in order to uh, record the episode. It may not look bad on your end, but from where I'm standing here, it doesn't look very good. And my mouse is getting pulled. I will be moving into a new office sooner or later, which is going to be about the start of September at some point. So the office is right now getting prepared so I can actually move in with sound isolation and just a larger space for me to be in so I can focus on working YouTube full time in the future. So that is something I'm looking very much forward to. The green screen is also going to change up. I don't know if you guys can see how it looks like. I may just show it here at the end so you can see what exactly I'm working with. Um, but just know that it, it's going to get better. 
And again, just know that we will be using, you know, more examples like loops inside future projects. So we can actually see when we do actually use them. Me just standing here saying that, oh, well, we use loops all the time. It's not really going to, you know, tell you how exactly we use the loop. So we will get to some examples at some point and then you can see how exactly we use them. If you want to see other examples, just go to any of my other programming courses where I talk about loops and then do a project after because I will be showing loops there and it's essentially the same thing when it comes to C-sharp. So uh, I hope you enjoyed and I'll see you in the next episode.